Okay, so we're looking at the relationship between um, city miles per gallon and the weight of a car. And we think that there's going to be a relationship. And so we started by looking at some data. So we're going to, um, if we wanted to plot this data, we could put weight on the x-axis and city miles per gallon on the y-axis. And then every car would, have, would be plotted with one point. It has a weight and a miles per gallon. So this point right here is 3235 comma 23. That represents the value of the car's weight, so 3,235 pounds and 23 miles per gallon in the city. So do you think that this scatter plot shows a relationship between a car's weight and its fuel efficiency? Yeah. Yeah, what's the general trend? Yes, the more it weighs, the lower the gas mileage, right? Greater weight means less miles per gallon. So the direction of the association, um, positively associated variables, mean that as one variable gets larger, so does the other. And negatively associated variables means that as one goes up, the other goes down. So what's, which, what is the direction of the association for the car? Negative, yeah. As one goes up, the other goes down. So we call that a negative association. The direction of the association is negative. And then we can talk about the strength of this, the association. So that reflects how accurately one could predict the value of one variable based on the other. So if I knew the weight of the car, could I, to the tenth of a mile per gallon, could I, could I predict how many miles per gallon that car is going to get? You know the weight. Do you know exactly how many miles per gallon? No, but could you give me like a range? Yeah. So if you can predict it with perfect accuracy, we say the co correlation coefficient is either positive 1 or negative 1, if you can predict with perfect accuracy. Okay. When the slope of the, when the direction of the association is positive, we say it's positive 1. If the direction is negative, the correlation coefficient would be negative 1, if it was perfect. And if it's not perfect, it falls somewhere in between negative 1 and 1. The closer to zero it is, um, the worse the predictive value, the less a relationship there is. So in our example, take a look at the graph again. Do these all fall on a perfect line? No. They all kind of cluster around a line. So the correlation coefficient is going to be negative. The R value is going to be negative because it's a negative association. So it's going to be somewhere between 0 and negative 1. 0 would indicate no relationship at all, and negative 1 would indicate a perfect relationship. So pick a value between 0 and negative 1 that you think might represent this. This is total, totally a guess right now. Negative 0.5. Sure, it's good. It's fine, yes. Okay. So our values are always between negative 1 and 1. The closer to 0 they are, the worse the relationship. And the closer to plus or minus 1, the more perfect the relationship. So the correlation coefficient measures only a linear relationship between two variables. Okay, so if I had a set of data that looks like this, are those dots all clustered along a line, a straight line? No. So I would actually say that R is 0 here. There's almost no linear relationship. But is there a relationship? Yeah, there definitely is a pattern in that 
diagram, it's just not a line. Okay. So when you measure correlation coefficient r, it's only telling you the linear, the strength of a linear relationship. There could be some other relationship that we're not investigating. So it turns out that the value, um, the r value here is about negative 0.82. And I will tell you how to figure that out in a couple minutes. So two variables can be strongly associated, measured by the correlation coefficient. They could have an R really close to one. It doesn't mean that one causes the other, right? So in the, in the car example with weight in miles per gallon, weight does influence how many miles per hour miles per gallon you get, right? So that, that is a cause and effect relationship. But often the explanation is related to a third variable that causes both of the things. So for example, shoe size is strongly correlated with math ability in school children. Children with larger shoe sizes tend to be much better at math than children with little feet. Do you think that, it, do you think that it's causative? Do you think that having larger feet makes you better at math? No. So what, what's the explanation? Why does this happen? Why do we see this relationship? Yes. There you go. The older you are, the bigger your feet get, and the better you get at math. So age is really the causative factor here. But there's definitely not a cause and effect relationship. Science and medicine and social science are filled with examples, like just filled with examples of people making this mistake of seeing a relationship between two variables and assuming that one causes the other. One that people are just starting to talk about is high cholesterol causing heart disease. And it's been assumed for a really long time that high cholesterol causes heart disease. But really, they're just strongly correlated. People with high cholesterol tend to have higher rates of heart disease. But we're just starting to see research come out now that says both things could be caused by something else. Okay, so um, I mean, just look anywhere. You'll see examples of this. Probably if you watch the presidential debate tonight, you'll see one of the candidates make an argument about two variables being correlated and assume causation. I've heard um, lots of things in education, right? People say, you know, students who take four years of math in high school are much more likely to be successful in college. Do you think the four years of math in high school cause people to, causes people to be successful in college, or do you think there's some outside factor that causes both things? It could be that students who like math, you know, take more math and are more successful in college, or a million different things, right? Students whose parents make them take four years of math tend to be more successful in college because their parents make them do all kinds of things, right, to, to get to prepare them. So keep your eyes out for, for that false causation argument. You'll see it everywhere once you start to have your ears open. So once you know that two variables are correlated, they have some kind of almost linear relationship, we want to get um, a line, the line of best fit. We call that the linear regression or the least squares regression, it's the equation of the line of best fit. So I want to be able to predict the fuel efficiency of a sports car by knowing its weight. The simplest model is to assume a straight line describes the relationship. And I want to come up with the best line to model the data. So um, the process of how to find out which line is the best, because you could draw like a ton of different lines, right, that seem to match the data pretty well. Your calculator has a method for doing it that's been um, proven to be the best way. So. I'm not going to show you how to do it by hand. We'll just have the calculator do it. But before I show you how to get the calculator to do it, I want to make sure you can interpret what the calculator will give us. 
So here's my um, regression line. I drew it. This is what your calculator, the kind of output that your calculator will give you. It says y equals ax plus b, so they use the letter a instead of m, like we've learned for a slope. And then it gives you the value of a and the value of b and the r value. We do not care about r squared, just ignore that. So the equation of this line is going to be y equals negative 0 0.0069, <coughs> excuse me, 69x plus 41.68, approximately, right? I rounded the numbers because I didn't want to write down every single decimal. So that's the equation of the best fit line. The R value is negative 0.815. That tells you that the association is negative. As one goes up, the other goes down. And it's pretty close to negative 1, which means it's a pretty strong correlation. All right, so let's take a look at how to get our calculators to do this for us. There's sort of a five steps or something. We have to enter the data, we have to graph the scatter plot, we have to find the equation for the line of best fit and graph the line of best fit, and finally we want to determine the R value. All right, so here's the data set I'm going to work with. It's a very small one, so I'm going to have That's my XY data. So I have screenshots in here to show you exactly what I'm doing so that you can go back and look at it later. Okay, so first you need to, um, to enter the data, you use the stat button to go to the statistics menu. So linear regression is really a statistical um, thing. So you press the stat button, it's right underneath delete. And then press the one key or just press enter, we're going to go into the edit menu. So we have list one, list two, list three, there's a whole bunch of lists here. If you have stuff in there, you want to clear it, keep the cursor on the name of the list, press the clear button, not the delete button, because if you press the delete button, the whole list will disappear. I just want to press clear. It seems like nothing happens, but when I move the cursor back down into the list, everything clears. So I'm going to clear all my lists here. All right, so once my lists are cleared, in list one, I'm going to put all the X data, 3, 5, 8, and 10. After each number, you just press Enter. Then I'm going to move the cursor over into list two, and I'm going to put all the Y data, 7, 8, 14, and 18. So I've created my table of values. All right, so if I want to graph the data, I want to press second y equals. And this is um, the stat plot menu. Choose option one, plot one. And I want it to be on, so I have to have the cursor on the on and press enter. And then I always just leave the type as this first one. For X list, I want it to be list 1. That's my X list. And my list of Y values is list 2. So mine is in there incorrectly. It says list 4. So I'm going to change it to list 2. So you can see in yellow above the numbers is L1, L2, L3. I'm going to change it to L2 by pressing second 2. And then I think that this is the best mark, this first one. But you can use the other two if you want. 
All right, so next we have to, you have to choose a window that's going to show all the data. And your calculator is so smart, when you're doing, when you give it a list of data values, it can pick a really good window by using zoom 9, which is zoom stat. Oops. Why do I have these errant lines in my graph? Yeah, I left some things in y equals from the last problem I did. Clear those. And then we just have the data. OK, so the next thing I want to do is calculate the regression line. So I'm going to quit out of here, go to my home screen. I'm going to go to the stat key again. So to enter the data, I went to the edit menu. To get the linear regression, I'm going to cursor over to calculate. To calc. And I want to cal choose option four, linreg, for linear regression. And it even has AX plus B in parentheses to tell you that that's what it's going to calculate. So you press enter, and it takes you back to the home screen where it says linreg AX plus B. Now you have to tell the calculator what lists to use as X and Y. So we're going to type list one, oops, second one, then comma, list two, and then comma again. And that now I have to put in where I want the calculator to save this data, to save this equation. And I want it to go to Y1 so that I can graph it. L1, it's right above the one in yellow. It says list one. So you do second, the number one. So I want it to take what a, the equation it's going to give me, and I want it to save it in Y1. So that's what I put in next, where I want it to save it. So the way I do that, scroll down a little bit here. I need to type a Y1 right there. And I get the Y1 by using the VARS key. So it's right next to clear. You press VARS. Go over to Y VARS for Y variables. Choose function. And then choose Y1. So it should look like this. Linreg AX plus B L1 comma L2 comma Y1. Once all that is in, press enter. And you should have a screen that looks like this. There's no R's. OK, so a couple people don't have R's. So the way to get R's, um, if you don't have them, is go to catalog, which is above the zero. Do second zero, catalog. This is a list of all the uh, commands in your calculator. So I want you to scroll down until you see diagnostic on. Diagnostic on. Once it's pointing at diagnostic on, press enter and enter again. And it should say diagnostic on done. Okay. So once you have that, call up, do the linear regression again. Hit second enter, second enter to call up the linear regression. Press enter, do it over, and this time you should get R values. Okay, so if everything went right so far, the equation's in Y1, you just press graph, and you get the line over your data points.